What up? This is Rama Screen, and in the anticipation of Come Find Me arriving on VOD January 13th, I'm, I'm here talking with the stars of this new film, Victoria Cartagena and Sol Miranda. How are you both this afternoon? Wonderful. How are you? Good, good, good. Thank you for taking the time. Congratulations. Um, Sol, let me start with you. Now, to my understanding, this movie was based off of Daniel's own short film that, uh, that he later on expanded. Uh, the original short film that featured you. Uh, so when Daniel decided to turn this into a full-blown movie and have you back as well and add the uh, the daughter element, uh, what was your initial reaction to those changes? What was your conversation with Daniel in terms of how you would approach, uh, approach those changes compared to how it was in the short film? I told him absolutely not. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I was like, yes, when he was like, uh, what do you think about adding to this? Uh, so it's not going to be so much about your character, your journey. We're going to share here. <laughs> I was like, yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, I, you know, when, when we shot what is in the film, the second part, right? That's what we shot first. So I, the minute I met, first time I met uh, Victoria, I was like, like, you know, after a few of the scenes there, it was just like, there has to be more. I craved more, um, not only the connection, but almost like a completion for, for, for the story. Um, like we were talking earlier today, we are twin souls, if you will, um, soulmates, you know. Um, and so I'm glad when he said that. And then, so the the second part was shot in 2017 and Victoria's in 2019? 2019. Mm -hmm. Yes. And each part around eight to nine days because this is an ultra low budget. So you have, it's, it's fast paced, right? Uh, which for me gives me an opportunity to let's do it right no 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 can't bullshit around oh can I say that okay. um so so you just have to go in very focused show up no all your lines or most of them uh and um uh, and just and just do it and top-notch cast amazing working with Victoria and um yeah now Victoria uh when you come in, of course, this team is already established. They already worked together previously, you know, Sol, Daniel, and everybody. What was that like coming into that kind of environment? And what was it about Daniel's script that made you say, I want to be part of this? Well, I actually, I was a part of the first half. Just, I just wasn't featured as much as more the wedding. Mm. Um, but, you know, he he called me like a year and a half later. and He's like, we want to write a story for you about your character. Is that okay? And, and I was so we were talking about early, um, that never happens. Mm. So yes, please, it seldom happens. Absolutely. And I'd already gotten a taste of what it was like to work with Daniel and with Soul. They have this mutual respect and, and love for one, one another. And um, when Daniel works, as you see, he's very loyal to his actors. He worked with Soul before, and there's a lot of actors that you'll see from his previous films in this film. And it's, he's very much about including us in his creative process and asking us how we feel and then you know i've worked with soul and watching her process her acting process and how she can access emotions that are sometimes difficult to do take after take but she did that and i was watching that to, to so to expand on that i was like absolutely it was it was a, it was a no-brainer mm -hmm. the mother-daughter dynamics that you both portrayed in this film comes off very genuine very sincere like i could believe that you could actually be related as mother and daughter it was that believable uh did you both get to bond uh, her, before production or did you hit the ground running in other words what was your process in creating that authentic mother-daughter relationship on the screen uh let's start with you victoria uh, well, we like she was saying, it's ultra low budget, and it was like fast, quick, quick, quick. So we didn't have time, but we got to know each other, you know, in, in between the takes that we were we were having. And again, I can be very shy and awkward, but because Soul is and Daniel are so kind and and 
and really sort of allow you permission to sort of shine in a way that my guard is just left and we just, and we understand we the mother daughter relationship. We are daughters and we are mothers to daughters. So we understood that dynamic and we had a lot of similarities and synchronicities in the film um, that sort of bonded us. It was almost like, yeah, twin souls. Like we'd known each other before, almost like we've worked e with each other before. It's uncanny. So It is so funny uh, that I realized a few days ago um, as produ you know, wearing my producer hat and helping with marketing and posting on social media, you know, when you're ultra low budget, it's not like you have a staff doing that stuff. So, so, and you know, Vicky's your, your, your Instagram account, uh, includes the number 11, like your Victoria Cartagena 11 and I'm Sol Miranda 11. We didn't plan that, you know? So there yeah, are these yeah. like, Oh. funny funny things you know uh so maybe from another lifetime I don't know but I just I just feel you know um yeah everything was fast so fast and this is you know this is a great great um environment for any actor any creative any crew uh to work under such limiting conditions because uh, in my training and as an actor, that was the kind of training I received. You know, I'm going to put you in a box and you're going to find the freedom in that box. Mm -hmm. Good luck, you know? And I, as an actor, I react to that. If you give me too much freedom, I may get very scattered and I may need more time to focus within way to freeing conditions. Actually, I want the constraints and find the freedom within that. Um, That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I, I'm going to be honest with you. There were times when I was watching this movie where I had some difficulties following the storyline. There's a lot of shifting stuff, shifting timelines, you know, and uh, uh, there's some uh, repeated stuff like Groundhog Day situation. You know, uh, you, like you said, first half of it focuses on uh, uh, Christina, the second half focuses on Gloria. Um, when you read the script, did you find the same challenges? Did you experience the same challenges as I did? Why do you think Daniel wrote the script this way? And how did this unique storytelling approach help you with your characters, specifically with your performances? I mean, I kid you not, uh, because the pacing of the shooting is so fast. Yes, there were times that I needed to talk with Dan, where are we now in the mm -hmm. sequencing for my continuity, right, uh, perception. Um, but he he was there. He, he, he offered always that clarity. Uh, so I trusted that, and I always felt very comfortable that way. Um, and then um, in terms of the linear versus non-linear aspect, I think it was really, I mean, I think this is a beautiful, powerful, stirring film that represents also Latinos, uh, Latinas, female driven, but at the same time, um, very unique among the la Latin cinema, Latinx cinema to have something more um, structurally artistic, uh, where the director is taking some chances, not just, you know, the, the linear sequencing. And I believe that he took a gamble there. He took a risk and I think it paid off, you know, not all movies are for everybody. Right. And I just feel that his gamble is for him. He's, his telling of the story is, a, is the, the third character, right in this relationship by showing us what the journey is in the psyche, in, in the heart, right? Uh, we are both in major crisis. Um, Gloria may have cancer or not. Her daughter is getting married. She's retiring after giving, you know, I don't know, 20, 25 years to this school to raise their grades after all of this, no child left behind. Remember that? 
-hmm. and testing, testing, testing. But then she pushes her daughter away. She misses her daughter. She would wish her daughter would be in Brooklyn instead of California. And, and at the same time to release and let go, redeem herself, forgive me because I was a tough cookie as a mom. Um, all of those things, even within us, are non-linear. You know, mm. I'm doing, I'm doing a dryer load. I leave the dryer door open. I deal. I mean, in an interview, my dog is next here. Please don't jump at me. So we are dealing with all kinds of things. Mm. We are non-linear, but when we go to the theater or the films. Mm. Um, we want it linear for the most part. I understand we want a break, a mental break, but I don't see this movie in any other way because it becomes a, a more clear telling of what's going on inside in each one of them. And then there's the light, but I'll let Victoria talk about the nonlinear. Uh, yeah, I mean, like she was saying, a lot of times we're not, our lives are not very linear unless you're really still unable to be completely present all the time. You're either in the past, like Christina, worrying about what you know, what you did, what you should have done, or in the future, worrying about what you should do. And so knowing that, you know, even about myself, like helps me understand the character. So as long as I, un I can understand that, and then I can relate it, and then I can tell the story. So it wasn't uh, really confusing, uh, but also because we had to do our homework. We really had to read the script and know what was going on. And I think my job was a little bit easier than some of the monologues that you had to do uh, um, over oh boy. and over. Oh, my was, God. It was amazing to watch. She nailed it. Yeah. Now, um, and finally, um, I got to say, even though I'm not Latino, I, I can relate to the themes. I, I love this movie and a lot of scenes made me cry. Uh, you know, I come from a culture or cultural background where my parents are conservatives, traditional minded. So that scene about whether or not or they were arguing about whether or not to bring in a priest in addition to a rabbi, you know, a lot of us can relate to that, especially when we're, you know, dating or marrying somebody outside our culture, especially Christina uh, having crisis of confidence about questioning her purpose as a lawyer. That's something that can resonate with us uh, millennial generations. So I guess what I'm getting at is finally, um, what do you what do you hope the audiences would take away from all these dilemmas uh, in this film? And what message, what lesson, if any, that Daniel wants to convey to us about how we should treat our parents or how we should treat our grown kids? What do you think that is? Uh, I was going to say something. I should have said that. Um, I think it's, I, I forgot your question, but I, th I think it's, he wants to talk about the light that, I mean, this is how I interpret it, the light that was within me in Christina, is also in her mother, is in her grandmother, but like we're all sort of mirrors of each other in that film. Christina and Maribel are mirrors of each other. You know, Sol and her, and her and, 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 and Gloria and Christina, we're all just searching for the right thing to do when we're in crisis. And sometimes mm -hmm. it's right here. Mm -hmm. And it's just trusting and having faith that everything's going to be okay. You just trust that it's right there and just get still enough and really check in to find out exactly what it, what is your next step. So? Absolutely. I, I Yeah, 100%. That light is, we all have it. Uh, we just want to make too much logic when we see something like that. Is, is this a fantastical movie? Um no, he's he's just taking another chance visually to to show the love, to show the connection, the intergenerational connection, the inter ancestral, if there is such a word, connection as well. You know, when gram her grandma, my mom in the film, shows up in my bed at the hotel and says, you know, she confirms, you know, this is you are my light, you know, be happy and have faith. And, you know, not for nothing, before Daniel wrote this, my mom, very Catholic, devout Catholic, my mom uh, did the rosary like three times a day, at least, you know, like that was her mantra, right? Um, she always told me, I, mija, have faith, no matter what. So 
you know, those are things that, of course, help you in the creation of a character when Daniel uh, psychically, <laughs> you know, magically is so connected with Victoria and mine's uh culturally and so open to that and our discussions with him um and uh I just you know the word that's been coming to me a lot is legacy you know you were talking about your culture your traditions what's your heritage Indonesian I'm Asian awesome uh and um yeah there is a lot of a lot of traditionals right a lot mm -hmm. of traditions that are parents and before them you know um i think they had it harder more stricter conditions you know um we are enjoying much more freedom um than what they went through um talking about limitations right but mm -hmm. they found freedom somehow mm -hmm. and hey look at us you know not too shabby right uh so Yeah, I, I think that legacy to keep the faith and the love and the light because it, it does get it, it gets easier slowly but surely. Um, um, however, emotional and moving and sometimes sad the film may be, I think it's about um, this ray of light. Yeah. All right. Thank you for sharing that. You too. And uh, for my fans at home, everybody go check out Come Find Me, arriving on VOD January 13th. Victoria and Soul, thank you for talking to me and congratulations. Thank you, thank you so much.